Evolution became popular when Charles Darwin proposed natural selection as a mechanism which might drive it. His paint pot genetics, which seemed reasonable at the time, promised unlimited genetic variability, which could be worked on by natural selection to give unbounded scope for genetic improvement. Gregor Mendel's experiments with peas and showed that Darwin's assumption was wrong. Genes do not get mixed together. They are fixed units and only get combined in different combinations. This allows only very limited variation within kinds. Julian Huxley, Theodosius Dobzhansky and Ernst Mayer got together and devised another theory in which mutations alter genes. This reopened the door for infinite variability, which Mendel's experiments had slammed shut. Their idea is taught as being the true and definitive theory of evolution. Julian Huxley defined evolution in Evolution and Genetics. Evolution is a directional, and essentially irreversible process occurring in time, which in its course gives rise to an increase of variety and an increasingly high level of organisation in its products. Our present knowledge indeed forces us to the view that the whole of reality is evolution, a single process of transformation. Sounds wonderful. Everything just gets better and better all by itself, from simple to complex, and it looks as if the sky's the limit. We just have to let it happen. But there's a problem. It's called the second law of thermodynamics. The second law says that when things are left to themselves, they become more and more disordered. Things left to themselves go from good to bad and from bad to worse. Anything left to itself will never get more ordered, more complex, never. This is the most fundamental law of science. One of the most famous scientists of the last hundred years, Sir Arthur Eddington, wrote one of the most famous statements about science ever made. You can find it quoted hundreds of times on the internet. He said, if your theory is found to be against the second law of thermodynamics, I can give you no hope. There is nothing for it but to collapse in the deepest humiliation. Even Bible-hating, Christian-bashing, high-profile, secular humanist promoter Isaac Asimov admitted that we do not know any process which goes against the second law. He admitted, as far as we know, all changes are in the direction of increasing entropy, of increasing disorder, of increasing randomness, of running down. In that case, with evolution requiring everything to happen exactly as the second law says it cannot happen, how come evolutionists have not just given up and admitted it's impossible? Evolutionists claimed the second law did not apply to them. For a long time, they put out the story that the second law only applies to closed systems, systems where nothing comes in from outside. It doesn't apply, they claimed, because the sun's energy streams in and makes evolution happen. Evolutionists became quite an embarrassment to real scientists because of this. Dr. John Ross wrote an article to try to put them on the right track. He pointed out that the second law applies equally well to open systems there is somehow the notion that the second law of thermodynamics fails for such systems. It's important to make sure that this error does not perpetuate itself. I had an experience of this error causing embarrassment 
at Stellenbosch University a few years ago. I was giving a lecture and one of the biology staff stood up and interrupted the lecture. He told me I was wrong about the second law. It does not apply to open systems and it's therefore no problem for evolution. One of his colleagues behind him stood up, tapped him on the shoulder and said, Corbus, I'm a chemist. I work with the second law all day long. He's right. You're wrong. Shut up. There's a website, Encyclopedia of Human Thermodynamics, which lists 20 different theories that evolutionists have put forward to try to get round the second law. The article ends up by saying, all of them has resulted in humiliation and ridicule. It sounds as if Eddington was right. If your theory is found to be against the second law, I can give you no hope. There is nothing for it but to collapse in the deepest humiliation. No wonder Fred Hoyle said, evolution is nonsense of a high order. No wonder Louis Bournoua said, it's a fairy story for grown-ups. No wonder Chandra Wickrama Singer said, the impossibility of evolution is a fact of science which biologists seem blind to. And no wonder Malcolm Muggeridge said, it will be one of the great jokes in the history books of the future. So... Why does the evolution story continue? Let's look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.